Well, this is the um, Welsh Cruth. It's an instrument which um, originates from everywhere in Europe, in a way. Um, it, it was known in, in Britain in um, Roman times, back in the 4th and 5th century. Um, but it didn't look quite like this in those times. It's, um, it didn't have the neck, um, and it, it was a, a plucked lyre then, without the bridge as well. But it was called a crota, which became the word cruth um, in Welsh. And um, it was really played all over Britain, and I think all over Europe as well, really, ver versions of this instrument. But it became... It, they specialised in it in Wales, in a way. And sometime during the Dark Ages, it acquired a neck, um, which means that you can stop the strings against the neck to make the different pitches. Um, and then after it acquired the neck, it acquired a bow, which meant that you could, you could then bow the strings. Um, and um, it reached this, this form by about the 12th or 13th century. And then it stayed like that. It didn't really develop after that. We have pictures and carvings and descriptions of the Cruth, which are pretty much exactly like this. And, um, and it more or less died out in England then. Um, or versions of it with three strings were played for a bit longer, maybe. But in Wales, um, it became an instrument of real status. The Cruth and the Harp were the two real instruments of Wales. And it had a whole, um, not really folk music repertoire attached to it, but like an art music repertoire, really. It was, it was an instrument, it was the classical instrument of Wales, the Cruth and the Harp, the two classical instruments in a way. And it was also played in a folk context as well, so I suppose it had both both elements to it. So, um, so it's got a sort of an it's got a very illustrious history, really. But then, as the violin came to Wales in the um, the early seventeenth century, um, it took over from the cruth, and there were other string instruments as well. There were rebecks and viols and instruments like that around at the time, and. Um, and a new kind of music was coming over. Um, so you started having country dances and um, the sort of folk music that generally people play nowadays mainly dates from sort of 17th, 18th century. And the cruth really is, is a medieval instrument. Um, so you had these new instruments, fiddle and then flute and, and so on, that, could, that had a wider range than the cruth. The Cruth has lots of drones and harmony in it. That was going out of fashion. Um, so the, it got um, it got sidelined by the violin, really, and it got more and more scarce then through the 18th century. And by the 19th century, it's, it died out about the beginning of the 19th century. So And it really, it completely finished, really. So, um, But at the time, what's great is that um, while, it, while it was dying, really, in the 18th century, um, various people got very interested in it because it was this rarity and this strange traditional instrument that still existed that had died out, you know, hundreds of years ago everywhere else. And um, so a lot of people wrote about it um, and wrote quite specifically about it, describing how you play it, how you hold it, the method of tuning, um, and there are great lists of the pieces that Cruth players used to play. Um, so we have a lot of information about it and drawings of how it's held and drawings of, you know, quite exact drawings of the instrument. And, um, and also we have some instruments that survived from that time. recordings of the original Cruth players of course because those things didn't exist when they, was, they were alive um, there are really, uh, well a few people have used Cruths on, on records but there are only really two main records of Cruth music, one is the one I made um, which is called Cruth and um, that was four years ago and the other one is made by Robert Evans um, which is Cruth with some singing made out 
little sycamore. Um, this is one piece of sycamore. You can see that it's it's got a strange sort of turn in it. This is it's, it's all one big block, so that loses quite a lot of wood there. Um, it's just a practical thing. It allows you to bring your hand round there. And the belly is made of spruce. And this is leather, and the fingerboard is made of holly, which is a harder wood. The strings are made of gut. Um, and um, there's no bass bar or anything as in a violin. It's just a simple box, really, with some with some strings on it. Um, the um, originally it, it didn't have the the neck, so that was added during the Dark Ages, and um, and then of course the bow. We don't actually have any original bows from the days when cruise playing was still alive and well. Um, so we've had to experiment reconstructing bows. Um, there are various pictures and they're all completely different to each other. Some are tiny, some are huge. And um, I expect it was just a local thing. People made, you know, people made them themselves, I should think. really want to play Kruth music you just have to abandon your ideas of what you wanted to play in the first place and start learning what the instrument wants to play which is a different thing entirely um, so then I started finding a few tunes that worked really well and they were really simple to start with they were songs mainly and slow things and very very simple dance tunes and worked from there um, and I'm I love harmony and I love the drones. So I I worked quite a lot on um, finding different different harmonies. Um, and and there there are this is the real richness of the crew. There are so many harmonies you can get with with six strings played together. Um, so I worked a lot on just finding the sound of the instrument initially, and then after that I looked more at the older repertoire. Um, the 18th and 19th century repertoire to begin with, and then after that, more recently, I've started looking more at the medieval repertoire, which is far more difficult, really. And um, you know, I, I, I suppose I, I, I found I just found I had to learn the playing techniques first, really, before I even attempted to uh, re revive or create any kind of repertoire for it. And in the process, I've written quite a lot of Kruth music as well. So I've really. Um, I really fell in love with the instrument, I suppose, and I've I've spent an awful lot of time time with it. The playing technique um, we know about this from um, written sources. People described it in the 18th century when the Kruth was in fact dying, really. Um, people took an interest, and particularly someone called Edward Jones Barbara Brennan, who was a big folk song collector, described the method of tuning it, the method of holding it, and there are plenty of poetic descriptions which tell us also of how it sounded and various aspects of the method of playing. Um, and there's also lots of pictures of people um, holding Kruths, so um, we know how it was held. So we really know, we, although we haven't got recordings of, of Kruth players, we really have kind of all, all the information we need to reconstruct how it sounded and how it was played. And there's a good reason for holding it this way. It's because to reach the upper strings you have to move your left hand, which means that um, you, you need your left hand free be able to move it so the belt holds it in place. Um, the left hand fingers the top, the upper four strings and the bottom two strings are either drones or else they're plucked with the left thumb and in the poem which I said that's it's described how they used to pluck a rhythm with the left thumb as they were playing. Um, the tuning, it's the tuning which has the attested tuning, the historical tuning, um, 
well, it's historical tunings in C. I've got mine in A, so I'll describe it in A. But it's the relationship between the strings that are important, not the pitch, really. The the key strings, Cawairdana in Welsh, are the A strings. Two A's in the middle. And then there's the Krastana, which are the sharp strings, the top strings. They're a B. So you've got one, one, two, two. Tune, but that should be an E at the bottom. So you've got do do re re so so, and um, that puts you in the key of the, the key of A. Sorry. So if you bow that, then if you play the upper strings. Have an A and an E drone sounding beside the melody. If you play the middle strings, you have the E and the B sounding as the drones. So that means really that you have a sort of chord one in the key of A. If you play this, these top strings, and a chord five, E B. play the middle strings and that's really how the crew fundamentally works because the reason you choose to play one string rather than another string is because of the harmonies that happen behind it not in order to go up and down as you would on a violin for example if you want to go up and down you have to move your hand um, so this is the, this is the attested historical tuning this is the tuning I use most often if I play you just a little, this is a, just a little child's lullaby, you can hear the chord one, chord five. <laughs> 